بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد رب شح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أمين يا رب Today's talk inshallah will be beneficial to many if Allah wills Today's talk I will uh, mention some things that uh, I think everyone uh, that listens to it will benefit for themselves and for others inshallah ta'ala the subject today is on Ibn, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah, and uh, his opinions on Sufis, okay? his opinion on the Sabuf, his opinion on the people of uh, people of Dhikr or the people of Zuhud or the people of the Sabuf, his opinion on these issues. And we'll be looking at some different dimensions of this. Uh, towards the end, if I remember, I also want to talk about one of the similarities between Imam Ghazali regarding Imam Ghazali's critique of the Sufis and Imam Nitaimiyah's critique of the Sufis. So with this let us uh, start with no none other person about the question of, of, of gathering for dhikr of circles, remembering Allah, remembering his Prophet, sending salams upon his Prophet, uh, listening to the Quran, doing uh, takbir, tahmid, tahleel, uh, la ilaha illallah subhanallah doing these things uh, let's look at what Imam Ibn Taymiyyah would say and the last thing I want to share with you is after you've understood where Imam Ibn Taymiyyah stands is I want to share, share with you where Bin Baz stands in his in his fatwa site okay so uh, I don't know how long the discussion will be today but I do want to definitely share some gems and we will look at Imam Ibn Taymiyyah's works regarding this question's different dimensions before I begin, I want to say something important, and that is that for the last 1400 years, there's never, ever, 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 I say this with, inshallah, full confidence, uh, full knowledge of what I'm saying, meaning I don't have knowledge of minute details, but there has never been a well-known scholar throughout Islamic history that has opposed the people of dhikr or the people of tasawwuf or the people of sufis as a whole no they've had difference of opinions regarding many many issues which i won't go into details of right now and they have had uh, difference of opinions about uh, the, the process of purification of the soul for example different issues they've disagreed on the furu'a the branches of the issues but they've never disagreed on the asul the fundamentals of purification of the soul throughout 1,400 years until the last 300 years where the Ummah has been sleeping like Ashab al-Kahf, okay? That uh, the last 300 years or so, we've been asleep and then now a group comes that claims that, oh, you know, wait, there's the people of Bid'ah and the people of Sunnah and there's always been a group of people on the Sunnah that have opposed the people of Bid'ah and so this has been a, a, a thing that has been there for the Islamic history. This, does, this, this image does not exist. It is not true. And the proof of it is going to be the words of Shaykh Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi. His own words will be proof on this issue. Now, <coughs> only the last 300 years people have opposed the people of Zuhud. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah has problems with the Sufis just as Imam Ghazali had problems with the Sufis. So now with that, and but again, that's not as a whole, but certain groups within. And in fact, his classifications of the types of Sufis is very similar or eerily similar to Imam Ghazali. So now we are looking at the Majmu'a Fatawa Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimullah. This is the Majmu'a, the collection of the Fatawas of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. Okay, so who best to ask about the people of Bid'ah other than Imam Ibn Taymiyyah regarding those people who claim him to be the forerunner or the mujaddid of these issues. Okay? So, Su'ila an Rajul, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah was asked about a man, Yankuru ala Ahlul Dhikr, who would go against or dislike the people of Ahlul Dhikr. Wa yaqulu lahum, 
And he would say, he would say about them that do the dhikr. Okay, so we're, what are we talking about? We're talking about people that gather together, listen to Quran together, do dhikr together, say la ilaha illallah together. They're doing things together. They're sending salams upon the Prophet ﷺ together. So who's going to answer this question? Imam Ibn Then later on we will at the end, if I have time or if I feel like it, will do Bin Baz. Okay, so now what he says, he says, يَقُولُ لَهُمْ this man that is against the people of dhikr, he says about them, هَذَا ذِكْرُ bid'ah. This dhikr is bid'ah. وَجَحْرُكُمْ And your reading dhikr out loud is also bid'ah. Over here I want to be clear, so that everyone is clear, because I have to be true to knowledge, that the Islamic scholars, they did disagree. Is it better to do dhikr silently? Or is it better to do dhikr out loud? Many great scholars or majority of the great scholars said, no, it's, it's better to do it out loud. And if I have to go into that, I can go into that. But many great scholars also said it's better to do it uh, silently, to do dhikr silently. None of them rejected the other. Never, never. None of them said this is bid'ah or haram or makru. No, they were only talking about which is mustahab, which is better, which has a better effect on the soul. So, but this person who is asking this question, so this is why I want this to be clear, هَذَا ذِكْرُ bid'ah. He says, this gathering of the people is bid'ah, وَجَحْرُكُمْ And reading it out loud, في ذِكْر bid'ah. It's also bid'ah. Reading Quran or reading dhikr or doing la ilaha illallah out loud together is also bid'ah. وَهُمْ يَفْتَتِحُونَ بِالْقُرْآنِ And they start their 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 halaqa with Quran. وَيَخْتَتَمُونَ And they finish it with Quran. ثُمَّ يَدْعُونَ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ Then they do dua for the Muslimins. الْأَحْيَاءِ uh, Whoever al ahya'u wal amwat lil muslimin ahya'i wal amwati, then they do du'a for the Muslims that are living and dead. Wa yajtami'oon, and they gather. And what do they do? At tasbih, wa tahmid, wa tahlil, wa takbir. They do Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. They do this together out loud in a halqa, and wa yusallun ala Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And they do salams and salat was salams upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and uh, and so he stops them from uh, listening, and he does things to tr kind of like prevent them from this halaqa that they have. Okay, so this is he, Imam Nataimi was asked about this man who says this, who has this 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 attitude towards the halaqa where these things are happening. Just like uh, there may be people. Uh, who see this and find this strange. But you know what? Before Muslims were asleep, like Ashabul Kahf, okay, before the 300 years, right, this was normal. So what does Imam Naitemiya say? We must know what Imam Naitemiya holds as an opinion on this question. Fa'ajaba, Fa'ajab, he answered, al li dhikrillahi wa istima' كتابه ودعاء عمل الصالح هو أفضل القربات والإبادات في الأوقات فيه صحيح. Okay, he says, الاجتماع للذكر, the gathering of ذكر, واستماع كتابه, and listening to his book, doing dua, and عمل الصالح, meaning these different أذكار. وَهُوَ أَفْضَلُ الْقُرُبَاتِ These are the best ways to have qurba, have nearness to Allah. وَالْإِبَادَاتِ And is the best ways of ibadat. وَفِي الْأَوْقَاتِ فِيهِ sahi. Okay, in their, in their, in their times, at the time. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and Imam Nithamiya is quoting this statement of the Prophet, إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَلَائِكَةُ سَيَّاحِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Okay, the... Allah inna lillahi malaikati in inna Allah inna lillahi malaikati for Allah indeed for Allah are angels they are sa'ihun they travel fil ard 
فَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِقَوْمٍ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهِ When they pass by a people, a قوم, a people, a group, يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهِ تَنَادَوْ Then they call one another, right? Uh, and then the hadith, the rest of the hadith is no, known, right? And وَجَدَنَاهُمْ uh, and, and Allah says, what were they doing? وَجَدَنَاهُمْ يُسَبِّهُونَكَ وَيَحْمِدُونَكَ Okay, they do tasbih of you and they do tahmid of you. They say subhanallah and they're saying alhamdulillah. Now, <clears throat> Sheikh bin Baz will answer this very point of, of, of this and see how his answer differs from Sheikh ibn Taymiyyah. Lakin, but Imam Taymiyyah, Lakin yambagi an yakuna hadha hayyina fi ba'd al-awqat wa amakina فَلَا يَجْعَلْ سُنَّ رَابِطَ يُحَافِذْ عَلَيْهِمَا إِلَّا مَنْ سَنَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. So he says, just make sure, okay, he says these are all good things, just make sure it's that those things, except those things that are in the narrations or the hadiths or the du'as that are given by the sunnah of the Prophet, they can be done on a regular basis. But if you do something uh, like a certain zikr or a certain thing from your own, then it is, you do it sometimes, you leave it sometimes. You don't do it all the time. Okay? So this was his opinion on this. إِلَّا مَنْ سَنَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم دَوَامُهُ عَلَيْهِ فِي اجْتِمَعَاتٍ Okay? So uh, he says that doing this, okay, doing these things, and I'll show you much more that what Imam Ibn Taymiyyah says about the the people of the Savuf or the people of the Zikr. Of course, Imam Taymiyyah has a lot of uh, points he raises as side issues that are unique to him too. Like he has a big uh, debate in his articles about the word Sufi. Where does it come from grammatically? But then he talks about how this was known as the people of Zuhud. And then it became the people of Sufi. So he has, he has this thing like, no, we should still use the word Zuhud. Instead of Sufi, okay, that was his opinion, but but the act, the act of coming together and doing things that before the people of Zuhd did, which he includes Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal in it, Sufyan as sawri in it, he includes many of these people in his list of people of Zuhd. Okay, anyway, so he says coming together, doing adhkar, remembering uh, the the prophet doing salawat on the prophet doing allahu akbar la ilaha illa all these things as long it is his wordings are from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is okay can be done on a regular basis if the wordings are not from the sunnah of the prophet then it should not be done on a regular basis it can be done from time to time this is his opinion on this issue okay <coughs> now uh, some people may uh, may have like some questions. Really? This is what he says? Well, then it's not enough to show you one passage by Imam Taymiyyah. Nor is it fair only to read snippets of his writings, of course. So, you know, I'm going to show you many different snippets so that you get an overall view that, okay, wait, maybe he wasn't against this completely. He had certain issues that he was against. But overall, as a principle, to do this was well known in his time. And in fact, if I may say so, he was, he had the khirqa. You know that when you become a khalifa of a, uh, of a, a murshid, when you become the, the successor, he was, he had the khirqa of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani, rahmatullah alayhi. Okay, he was given it from Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani, it went to Ibn Qudama, Qudama, and then his teacher gave it to uh, Ibn Taymiyyah. Okay, there's only two people in between Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani and Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. Okay, uh, two people, yes. Okay, so I, I will be talking about that in a little bit. And then Imam Taymiyyah continues, وَأَمَّا مُحَافَزَةَ الْإِنسَانِ أَلَىٰ أَوْرَادِ لَهُ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ أَوْ قِرَاءَ أَوْ ذِكْرْ أَوْ دُعَاءَ And then, uh, so as far as his preserving, the human being preserving his awrad, whether it be of salah or qira or dhikr or dua, tarfi nahar aw zulfa min al layl or it is a part of the day in the part of the day or in the in the part of the night wa ghayri dhalika fa hadha sunnah rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam this is the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was salihin min ibadillahi 
قديما وحديثا فيما صنع عمله على وجه الاجتماع so he says this is the sunnah of the prophet and the salihin before and now فيما صنع عمله على وجه الاجتماع uh, and as far as the gatherings are concerned uh, كالمكتوبات uh, uh, that, are, that have been documented كذلك like that من صنع uh, as far as the uh, the the indiv and and so that's for the ijtima and then the individual uh, the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yajtami'un ya'mur like umar bin khattab it says kama kana ashabu radiyallahu anhum yajtami'una hayyinan so the companions of the prophet would sometimes gather ya'muruhu ahadahum yaqra'u wa yabquna wa yastami'un and he would or and he would order them they would order someone to read quran and they would cry after they listen wa kana umar bin khattab yaqul ya aba musa zakkarna rabbana yaqra wa hum yastami'un and umar bin khattab would say come recite quran to us just like the prophet asked one companion recite quran to us let us remember wa kana min min ashabi yaqulu ijlasu ijlasu let's sit down uh Bina, uh, sit down with us and nu'min sa'a. Let's believe, let's remember the hour. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi ashabihi tata'uwan fi jama'a marat. Many, many times the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the companions, they would gather in gatherings to many times. Ala ashabi min ahli suffa wa fihim qari. يَقْرَأْ فَيَجْلِسْ مَعْهُمْ وَيَسْتَمِعْ And he says that many times the Prophet would come to Ahlul Sufa and they would sit down and the Prophet would listen to Qur'an with them. So this, he says, is a what? A proof that it's okay. And who is he responding to? He's responding to this man who is saying to gather halaqa to dhikr, saying La ilaha illallah or reading Qur'an and starting with Qur'an and saying salams upon the Prophet. He's saying this is wrong. Imam al is responding, no, this is from the time of the Prophet, the Sahaba did this. They would sit down and remember the hour, the Day of Judgment. They would sit down and listen to the Qur'an. They would cry and they would do this on a from time to time basis, that this was happening in the time of the Prophet Okay, then <clears throat> let's inshallah continue. And then he continues. وَمَا يَحْسِلْ عِنْدَ السَّمْعَ And as for what is attained by listening wa dhikr al mashru fi wajilat wajila al qulub is the the softness of the is the is the is the you could say the softness of the heart wa dam al ain in tears in the eyes wa iqtisha'ar al jusum and the chills or the shivering of the body which is mentioned in the quran and, and i'll go over that if i have time hadha afdhal al ahwal allati natiq biha kitab al sunnah this is the best of states of being that has been mentioned by the Kitab and Sunnah. That you're listening to the ayat of Quran and crying, or remembering Allah and crying, and your soft heart becomes uh, in, in a state of uh, humbleness by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or your heart or your body chills or shivers from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are mentioned in the Quran, and Imam Nathamiya mentions it in detail. وَأَمَّا الطِّرَابَ shadid As far as being broken down a lot وَغَشِيَةً And being overwhelmed وَالْمَوْتَ And even dying uh, 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 And then فَهَذَا إِنْ كَانَ صَحْبُهُ مَغْلُوبٌ and, and because of zikr and listening And if a person becomes مَغْلُوب Becomes weak Becomes overwhelmed لَمْ يَلِمْ عَلَيْهِ There is no uh, uh, There is no blame upon him There is no كَمَا قَدْ كَانَ يَكُونُ فِي التَّابِعِينَ As it was happening in the time of the Tabi'een. People would listen to Qur'an and become overwhelmed and faint. وَمَنْ بَعْدَهُمْ in, uh, And then he talks about the weak heart and the strong heart. Okay? And the, the strong heart can take it. Okay? And the weak heart can't take it. And uh, I'll, I'll, if I have time, I'll talk about that. al uh, uh, تَمَكُّنْ أَفْضَلُ كَمَا حَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَصْحَابُهُ But as for, uh, uh, as for the person who has a hard heart, okay, 
and his heart doesn't get moved by listening, uh, he says, فَهَذَا مَذْمُومٌ لَا خَيْرَ فِيهِ This is disliked or this is blameworthy. Uh, and there's no good in it. That if your heart is listening to these things and you're not moved by it. So what to speak about, uh, what to speak, so Imam Nitaimiya is answering this person saying, what to speak about, this is actually what the, the condition, the, the, the result, the fruits, this is what we want, is to produce this. And they would do listen to Quran, and the Quran mentions this, and I will go over it uh, if I have time. Okay? And then, and then Imam Nitaimiya says, وَأَمَّا ذِكْرُ مِنَ السَّمَعَ As far as dhikr, with listening. Okay? فَمَشْرُوءَ الَّذِي تَصْلَحَ بِهِ الْقُلُوبِ This is one of the ways in which you fix the heart. وَيَكُونُ وَاسِلُهَا إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا And it is a way to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala بِالصِّلَةً مَا بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا Okay? That this uh, dhikr is a sila, is a connection between you b between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هُوَ السَّمَاءَ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ الَّذِي هُوَ السَّمَاءُ السَّمَاءُ خِيَارُ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ Listening to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sama'a, is the listening that the ummah has chosen. Uh, uh, and then he says قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يَتَغَنَّ بِالْقُرْآنِ And he goes on into detail because he's answering that person. زَيِّنُ الْقُرْآنِ بِأَصْوَاتِكُمْ And he talks about making the voices beautiful with Qur'an. هُوَ السَّمَاعَ مَحْمُودَ This is listening that is beautiful. وَهُوَ فِي كِتَابُ وَالسُنَّةِ وَلَكِنْ لَمَّا نَسِيَ بَعْضُ الْأُمَّ but when the Ummah forgot to listen to the Qur'an, literally that's what he's saying, الَّذِي ذَكَرُوا بِهِ أَلْقَى بَيْنَهُمَ دَعْوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ فَحَدَثَ قَوْمٌ سَمْعَ الْفْقَاسِدِ And then uh, the people stopped listening in gatherings and things like that, and then their hearts became hard. And then he says, then they invented things like clapping and uh, crying and these things that are not from the Sahaba. And he says, Lama and then they did things, what? That were like the Christians and the Jewish people before them and their hearts became hard. So instead of, and so what he's saying is instead of the sama'a becoming something that softened their hearts, it became something that actually just made them oblivious to the Qur'an and Sunnah. And there are groups that uh, end up doing that. But certainly he's talking about the uh, groups of his time that had developed certain ideas that were not in conformity with the tradition of Islam and that's what he is pointing out here but anyone can see in his majmu'ah okay uh, majmu'ah fatawa ibn Taymiyyah that when he's asked about is it bid'ah to gather together and read Quran or do tasbih out loud and read Quran out loud do dua for the Muslims that are living and dead saying salams upon the Prophet sallallahu الاجتماع لذكر الله ذكر الله واستماع كتابه ودعاء وعمل الصالح هو أفضل من قربات والإبادات في الأوقات في أوقات فيه السحي. Okay. And regarding the people gathering together, doing du'a, doing good deeds, saying La ilaha illallah, reading this, he says there in this there is a sahi, meaning a sahih hadith. And he continues from there. Okay. Now, this is one fatwa of Imam Nitaimiya. But I don't think, again, it's fair to show you snippets. Even though this fatwa, I showed you the whole fatwa. The whole fatwa. Okay? So this one, I showed you the whole fatwa. Now, next, I won't be showing you the whole fatwa, snippets. But I think the snippets can all come together to make the point, wait, this person's not against zuhud. This person's not against tasawwuf as, as, a, as a branch of knowledge. No, 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 no. He's not against that. He was never against that. He had issues in other areas. He had issues that were furu'at. Uh, he had issues that had to do with the process of it. He had issues to do with what is the best way of doing it. He had issues with the people like Imam Ghazali had problems with some Sufi groups of his time that would go to extremes, for example, or they would do it for show. Or or he said, um, they're, they're, they're ahlu rasam. They're, they're just doing it ritualistically. Or they're not doing it really for in their heart uh, and they, it's become a ritual for them to do these things which Imam Ghazali also criticizes so <clears throat> let's go and see a few more things that are very very important and I'll be describing how 
Imam Nitaymiyyah actually calls Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani alayhi, his Sheikh and you'll see why. Again, Imam Nitaymiyyah in his Fatawa, okay, uh, he says, Ay Sufi fil haqiqati naw'im min as-siddiqeen fa huwa as-siddiq al-ladhi ikhtas bil-zuhud wal-ibadah. He says, Sufi in reality is naw'um min as-siddiqeen, is one of the uh, types, you can say, of the siddiqeen, meaning they have the next best rank after prophethood. Fa huwa as-siddiq al-ladhi ikhtas. So because he is a Siddiq and he specializes that he special that he makes specific for himself the Zuhud with Zuhud he makes Zuhud on himself Wal Ibada and by his Ibada he makes the uh, the internalization of the truth manifested within himself. So Imam Nitaimiya says this what in his fatawa. Okay? Again in the Majmu'ah of Imam Nitaimiya. He was asked, Su'ila Amman. He was asked about the one. Halal Sab'ina Alpha. He says, La ilaha illallah. He does Tahleel Sab'ina Alpha 70,000 times. Marra. Wahada hu. And he gives it as a gift or he does Hiba to Lil Mayit, the dead. Yakunu Bara'atan Lil Mayit min al nar. Will there be freedom or, uh, you know, uh, freeing of the dead from the fire? Hadith Sahih Am La. He is asking Imam Nitaimiyah, is this Hadith Sahih or not? وَإِذَا حَلَّلَ الْإِنسَانِ وَهَدَاهَا إِلَى الْمَيِّتِ يُسِلْ إِلَيْهِ ثَوَابُهُ أَمْ لَا So if he does this, does the reward of that reach that person or not? So who is being asked this? Again, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. So what does Imam Nitaimiyah say? إِذَا حَلَّلَ الْإِنسَانِ هَكَذَا Yes. When a human being does this, سَبَعُونَ أَلْفًا أَوْ قَلْ أَوْ أَقَلْ أَوْ أَكْثَرْ Whether it is less or more than that, وَهَدِيتُهُ وَأَهْدَيْتْ إِلَيْهِ نَفْعَ اللَّهُ بِذَلِكَ And he gives this as a gift to that uh, dead person. نَفْعَ اللَّهُ بِذَلِكَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give benefit to that dead person. But... And this is where he was strict, and this was particular to his uh, methodology. He says, this hadith is not sahih, nor is it weak, meaning it doesn't exist. But this is something people did to give the rewards to the dead. Okay, And he is okay with reading La ilaha illallah 70,000 times to give the naf'a, the benefit to the dead. Even though he is also agreeing, what? That there's no hadith sahih or da'if on this issue. So, he calls the Sufis uh, a type of Siddiq. Okay? He says they're gathering together and reading dhikr, doing dua, saying salams upon the Prophet ﷺ. This is not bid'ah, rather it is a good thing. Okay? Uh, he says that reading something for the dead is not a bid'ah, it's not found in hadith, but yet it benefits the dead. This is Imam ibn Taymiyyah that people are not so much aware of. But there's much more, much more shocking information about Imam ibn Taymiyyah that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time, but today maybe is the day. So Allahu A'lam, Allah knows best. Right? So let's continue. Now let's talk about another bid'ah that uh, Imam ibn Taymiyyah was asked about, but bid'ah it is not. Uh, and and see what he says. He says uh, in his fatawa, he says, "Fasl kitab kitab hu shay'a min kitab Allahi bil midad al mubah." That to write something down from the book of Allah, and later on he's going to talk about athkar also different athkar. And you'll see the examples. Uh, uh, something of mubah. Wa siqayahu lil masab, and to give that to drink for the person who is injured. Okay. So he says, فَصَلْ يَجُوزْ أَنْ يَكْتُبْ لِلْمَصَابِ غَيْرُهُ مِنْ مَرْضَى شَيْئًا مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ أَوْ ذِكْرُهُ بِمِدَادِ الْمِبَاهِ وَيُغْسِلْ وَيَسْقِي كَمَا نَصَّ عَلَى ذَلِكْ أَحْمَدُهُ وَغَيْرُهُ He says, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm just saying that uh, to give write something in the, of the book of Allah or dhikruhu or his remembrance and to give that to drink, meaning you write it and then put it in the water and give that to the person to the drink is 
definitely something that is allowed. And then he goes on mentioning many, many examples. Okay, he gives this one particular example over and over again. He says about an Ibn Abbas, uh, when the woman is going through difficulty because of her pregnancy, So write these words. Uh, down and they say and then write down some ayahs of the Quran for example and then there are other verses and then the, the part that I want to share with you that was very interesting Ali Ali says about this okay uh, he says write this and uh, to place it by the, uh, the arm or put it on the arm of the female that's pregnant he said, وَقَدْ جَرَبْنَاهُ قَدْ جَرَبْنَاهُ We tested this. Why test it? Because it's not from the Qur'an or the Sunnah. It's something that they uh, innovated. But it was a good innovation. It was according to the Sunnah. They used an asal from the Sunnah. And then they came up with this idea. And they قَدْ جَرَبْنَاهُ لَمْ نَرَى شَيْئًا أَعْجَبُ مِنْهُ فَإِذَا وُضِعَتْ he, the lady, we would put this on her arm or we would give this her to drink and the baby would come out quickly. What more do you want? Now, this is the person uh, that the brothers of Ahlul uh, the Ahlul uh, Salafi brothers are using, this is the sheikh they're using to say that all these things are bid'ah. Writing down from the dhikr of Allah in a, a paper to uh, give it to somebody to drink is bid'ah. Doing a, a collective uh, adhkar is bid'ah, right? Uh, reading something to give it to the uh, the reward to the dead is bid'ah. Whereas their imam, okay, uh, and even after them trying very, very hard to change things around uh, of, of Ibn, Ibn Taymiyyah specifically, uh, they've tried very hard, but it has not worked. And this is an example of where Imam Ibn Taymiyyah actually stands. He's okay with you gathering together and doing dhikr of Allah, but with certain conditions, that it's according to the sunnah of the Prophet and the Qur'an. And of course, every true Muslim, who, whether he's Sufi or Salafi or ghayru dhalik, uh, will say, yes, okay, of course, it has to be Qur'an and sunnah. So, we have to then go to these gatherings and see and test, okay, are they saying something outside the sunnah of the Prophet or outside the Qur'an or are they saying everything within the Qur'an? This is why Imam Nitaimiyah, like Imam Ghazali, eerily speaking, talk about three types of Sufis. Now, let me tell you what Imam Nitaimiyah's allergic reaction was to so that everyone's clear on this and I'll show that to you so you can understand where his issues were and you can understand where his fatwas were, okay? His biggest issue was, because he was between the 3rd and the 4th century, okay? He didn't like the word Sufi, specifically. He just didn't like it. Because he was like, this is a new word we've invented. And the word that was used before this was Zuhud. And I'd rather prefer Zuhud or Ihsan than the word Sufi. And then he went into the etymology of the word of Sufi and said, this is not really, you know, it's not a very strong word within our tradition. And I really rather not have it. Okay, that's how he felt. That's why whenever he wrote books of purification of the soul, he used other words. For example, in his um, Risala, in his, which has been in English called Gardens of Purification, which is on purification. Okay, but it is on the Min Risail Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah Zuhud wal Wara wal Ibada. That's what he called. He liked calling instead of the word Sufi, he liked the word Zuhud. Okay? This is something that needs to be understood that as time was changing. So for example, we're living in a time today where we have a subject called Quran and Science. But someone can come and say, I don't like the word science. For example, take me. I don't like the word science because science has specific connotations with a certain field okay that is already well defined and so if i say quran and science then that literally means that science is 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 validating the quran and 
I don't like another branch of knowledge to validate the Quran. So I'll say, look, I got this is is a new branch of knowledge. I don't have I don't I don't like the term Quran in science. I'd rather use the words that of something that doesn't have a philosophy behind it. So, for example, I might like the word Quran and the natural phenomenon and the natural world or natural observation or human observation and how science shows human observation which then connects to Quran. Likewise, I can sympathize with somebody sitting uh, in a time where different words were being used for the same a same subject. Different words were used for the same subject. And Imam Nitemiya didn't like the word Sufi. That he had an allergic reaction to the word. But he did not go against the ideas of Zuhud or the ideas of Zikr or the ideas of Tisalu Sawab or, or all these things of the spiritual world. He was not against most of them. He was not. He had problems with some things that were done wrong in his time, but then can't be generalized. So, so somebody is somebody writes a book. I'll give you one example in the time of Imam Nitaimi, right? So somebody wrote a book of doing Hajj to the Qabr of Fulan and Fulan. Okay, it's one of the uh, uh, Ahlul Bayt uh, members of the family of the Prophet. So I'm not going to mention the names. So. He was. He saw that these things are happening. These books are getting popular, where people are writing down how to do Hajj to the Qabr of someone. So he wrote against going to the graves because of that reason. So it the context in which he was writing and to whom he was writing was very, very, very important. But if you look deeply enough and you look at his fatawas, right? He is also against those people who were against the Sufis and Zuhud, as you just saw. He was not a bid'ah a buster, as as you may say. So, <clears throat> Imam Nitaimiya was uh, critical, just as Imam Ghazali was critical. And so, let me share with you some aspects of what, how he saw the world of, the, how he divided into t three groups. Okay. So Imam Nitaimiya divides Sufis into three groups in his fatawa. He says, "A Sufiya thalasatul asnaf." There are three types, Sufa Haqa'iq, Sufiya Al-Haqa'iq, the Sufis of Haqa'iq, the truth, wa Sufiya to ar those Sufis who are in Sufism for their own money, okay? Uh, just like when, uh, if you remember the story of uh, Salman bin Islam, right? Salman bin Farsi, uh, radiallahu an when he was with one of the monks and he found out, well, he's a monk, he should be in like Zuhud and Tasawwuf, but he found out he has heaps of gold that he had hidden, right? So, Sufi Arzaq, they have um, hundreds of people that are their uh, students and they can take advantage of that. Well, Sufiya to, uh, Sufi to Rasam, and Sufis that have become ritualistic, they missed the real goal. They they went away from the Haqqaiq into the apparent functions and just the mechanical processes of things. This is how Imam Nitaimiya divides them. So who are the Sufi Haqqaiq? Those are the people that he talks about and we'll be talking about in some detail inshallah ta'ala. But Sufi Thalatatul Asnaf. Who is saying this? Imam Nitaimiya is saying this. So this kind of like feeling, oh, you know, just kind of like the modern day Salafi brothers, they have this kind of like uh, feeling like as soon as they hear the word Sufi or Tasawwuf or Zuhud or they get this like allergic reaction, right? Uh, and, and I understand that. But Imam Nitaimiya didn't have that allergic reaction because he didn't divide them. In, he divided them into different groups. He didn't brand them all as one as our Salafi brothers do. Like as soon as they hear, oh, that masjid's doing dhikr or that masjid's doing that or that masjid is doing salawat, the immediate reaction is an allergic reaction. Oh, you know what? They they don't know Islam. They, they're just doing their Ahlul Bid'ah, which is completely unfair. A completely unfair because Imam Nitaimiya is saying there are Sufis who are people of haqqaiq, people of truth. Okay? And he goes into great detail. But he had a problem with the word Sufi. And I'll give you an example of that, okay? Uh, I'm going to uh, share a lot uh, more, you know, I'm uh, hopefully I can, you know, I can 
I'll start off with this. For example, this is just an example of the type of like the issues he was dealing with in his mind. Uh, Alhamdulillah, amma lav sufiya fa innahu lam yakun mashhuran fil qurun al-thalatha. Uh, he says, as far as the word Sufi is concerned, in Naulam Yakun Mashhuran, it was not well known in Qurun Thalatha, in the first three generations, in the first three centuries. Uh, and it was made popular by the Mutakallimin and so on and so forth. And he goes into great details. He even says that Hassan Basri Rahmatullah may have used this word, and a few other people, he says, may have used this word in the past, but it wasn't the well-known word used for this uh, discipline of zuhud. And so he was, uh, in the 7th century, uh, complaining about uh, that this was not being used in the first three centuries. Of course, there's an easy argument against that, which I'm out of respect, not going to do right now. Like, where did the, uh, you know, the subjects of uh, Nahav and Sarf and Balagha or so on and so forth come from? Um, they were not all rooted, meaning istalahat, and there's a principle in Islamic law that is well known, that istalahat, the terminologies, do not have to necessarily be either in Arabic or necessarily rooted in uh, the original tradition. They don't have to be, because otherwise... Uh, you know, because of the development of how istilahat happen over time, that wouldn't. But the discipline overall has to be in, um, has to be in uh, conformity to the tradition. So, for example, again, Quran and science, or Quran and natural phenomenon. Now, there was no word natural phenomenon or science before, right? So we, we're going to have to borrow a word from today's time to explain the concept. Anyway, maybe I'm saying too much, but there are some very, very important things I want to share with you on how much, how much Imam Ibn Taymiyyah cared about the subject of Zuhud, the subject of Tasawwuf, the subject of Sufism, how much he cared about that. Uh, okay, so we're going to look at some uh, other aspects here now. But regarding terminology, then Imam Ibn Taymiyyah also then says, وَأَوْلِيَ اللَّهِ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Muttaqun. The awliya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are mu'minun muttaqun. Sawa'un. Samma ahadahum faqiran. Aw sufiyan. Aw faqihan. Aw aliman. Aw tajiran. Etc. Etc. Whether you, whoever, whatever name you want to give them, give them. Call them tajir, businessmen. Or call them sufi. Or call them faqihan. Or call them faqir. Call them by any of these names. Those people that have certain qualities, which we're going to go over, uh, those people, they, you can call them Sufi, you can call them Faqir, you can call them, it's all the same. This is, was his specific opinion. Okay? Okay? So, uh, so his he had furu'i issues and he had istalahi issues uh, you can say but he was not against the subject he was for the subject and he was for against he was for many many things uh, in that discipline that are being done even till today okay but he was against some of the things okay so now let's inshallah continue to some important things by the way this is the tomb or the grave of imam ibn taymiyyah where is he buried? An interesting question because he's buried in a Sufi Qadri cemetery. A cemetery where the Sufis were buried. That's where he's buried. Why is Imam Ibn Taymiyyah buried in a Sufi Qadri Tariqa cemetery? Why? Tell me why. I will tell you why. Because on the Khirqa of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, he says, and uh, the scholar uh, Abdul, uh, Ibn Abdul Hadi Ibn Taymiyyah, he says, Sulat Tariqa ma'a ghayruhu fi shayukh al-Hanabila. And he then says, Look, uh, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani, then, uh, then uh, Abu Umar Ibn 
Qadima. Qudayma is how I remember his name. And then uh, then Muafiq uh, al-Din ibn Qudama. Okay, then uh, said he's also Qudama. Ibn Abi Umar, Ibn Qudama, and then Ibn Taymiyyah, and then Ibn Qayyim. Thumma dhakar kalaman mahma jiddan. وهو نكل أن ابن تيمية نفسه قال ابن تيمية في مسائل تبريزية مخطوط دمشق ظاهرية لبست الحرقة المباركة للشيخ عبد القادر بيني وبينه اثنان He says I wore the حرقة okay, of what? Of uh, Imam uh, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani, the khirqa is given to somebody as okay, you're appointed on my behalf, like a khalifa. Okay, so he says between me and Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani was two people. Okay, so there's Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani in the year 500, towards the end of the year of the 500, the same year that Imam Ghazali is from, by the way, or the same century, sorry, and then Ibn Taymiyyah 200 years later. Okay. Uh, almost 200 years, okay, in that there were, he says, between him and that were three, it were two people. So, so this is uh, something that is, uh, that should be well known and should be accepted because the documentation and everything is there. And uh, now let me go into what Imam Ibn Taymiyyah considered, uh, who is the people of the Sabbath? Okay, who are the people of Zuhud? So what does Imam Nitemiya say this? And I'm only going to show you a part of it because it is just really, really beautiful. That's why. So because of its beauty and because of how he just uh, uh, explains this in a very beautiful way. So therefore, and you know, he talks about the, the ahwal of the Sahaba. And he says the ahwal of the Sahaba and the ahwal of the people, for example, crying or becoming unconscious. He mentions Musa alayhi salatu wasalam becoming unconscious when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to uh, manifest his tajalli on the mountain. And then he compares that with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam. And then he he says, even though Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he was great, but the Prophet was more a'azam because he was able to bear Something that Musa والسلام, wasn't able to bear. Who said this? This has all been said by Imam Niqayyim. Rahimullah. So it's really amazing that... Uh, uh, let me see how much of this that I want to um, uh, just end with, inshallah, here. Uh, I actually found an English rendering uh, here in Ibn Taymiyyah's own words as quoted from a work of Masail al-Tabraziyyah. I wore the blessed Sufi cloak of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani. There being between me him and me, only two Sufi sheikhs. Okay. And then, in another manuscript, he said, I've worn the Sufi cloak of a number of Sufi sheikhs belonging to various tariqats. Among them, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani, whose tariqah is the greatest of the well-known ones. May Allah have mercy upon him. He calls Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani his sheikh. Okay. Um, He says, and this now I'm not do, showing the exact uh, uh, Arabic text. I'm just reading the English. Okay. Uh, he says, Allah Almighty will unveil to his saints states that have never been unveiled before. And he will give them support without measure. If the saint begins to speak from things of the unseen, past, present, or future, it is considered from the viewpoint of Babul, uh, Bab al-Kalimul Kharik. I don't know what that word. Miraculous knowledge. Anything that a saint does which is from the unseen for people or for listeners of healing or teaching knowledge, it is accepted that we must thank Allah for it. Okay. Uh, and let's see what else. Uh, he says in another book, uh, in Fatawa al Misriya, okay, published by Al Madani Publications House, 1980, page 603, he writes, Miracles of saints are absolutely true and correct and acknowledged by all Muslim scholars. The Quran has pointed to it in different places and the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ have mentioned it. Whoever denies the miraculous power of saints are innovators and following innovators. So our Sanafi brothers who deny what? 
uh, what Imam Nathamia writes in another place. In his Majmu'a Fatah Ibn Taymiyyah says, again, uh, what is considered as a miracle for a saint is sometimes the saint might hear something or uh, that others do not hear or see something others do not see. Not hallucinations, miracle. Not while, uh, not while asleep, but in an awakened state of vision, he can know things that others cannot know through revelation or inspiration. Okay. Uh, and so Imam Nitimi has written a lot about the friends of Allah. And I'll mention actually one of his own uh, events in his life, one of the miracles that when he was fighting, because he's one of the people that actually did jihad in the battlefield. Uh, he was fighting against the Tatars and he, he was trying to rile the Muslims so that we have to fight against the Mongols. Baghdad had already been sacked. Uh, he was trying to rile the Muslims, we need to fight the Tatars. And he was telling the Muslims, you will have victory. And one person said to him, why don't you say inshallah? Why are you like uh, saying something about something for tomorrow that you need to say inshallah for? He said, I'll say it, tabarrukun. For tabarruk, I'll say it. But I already know the victory will be given to us. And what happened when he gathered the Muslims and he fought, he was given victory. That's Imam Nitaimiyah. Imam Nitaimiyah is the person who died reading the Quran. He read, he was reading these verses of the Quran, I'll show you, as he was passing away. So he's the most misunderstood scholar or the most, uh, he died reading this verse of the Quran, Fi maqa'adi sidqin inda malikim muqtadir while reading this so he's one of the he he's the most misunderstood scholar of islam part of what happened was if i have to go into the history of it i'll explain it like this if there was anyone that was an opponent of sheikh al-akbar ibn al-arabi the biggest opponent of him was imam nathaniya and if there was another opponent of Ibn al-Arabi, the number two greatest greatest opponent in the history of Islam was Sheikh Ahmed, uh, Sheikh Mujaddid al-Fasani, rahmatullahi. He said, "In Chikunad, what can I do? We eat from the breadcrumbs of the Dastar Khan of Sheikh al-Akbar." But the Mas'ala here is about Safat Bari Taala. So he says, I oppose. Mahyuddin Arabi, Sheikh Al-Akbar. But Shaulullah Muhaddas Delmi, he told us, this, like the Sahaba, we don't indulge in who's right and who's wrong. We leave it up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like the issues between the Sahaba. This is the issues amongst the great ones. This is their issue. We don't, we say, radiyallahu an or rahmatullah alayhi for Sheikh Al-Akbar. We say radiyallahu an to also, for example, Mujad al-Afsani rahmatullah alayhi. So this is their issues, but they opposed. Uh, the, so this opposition in which Imam Nathamia was writing to us regarding a certain viewpoint that he didn't like. On, in, the, in, the, in the opinion of Ibn, uh, Ibn al-Arabi's version of Wahdatul Wujud which is different from as it is understood by people of Tasawwuf today, which is a little bit different. So uh, that idea that uh, every, uh, God is creation and God is everywhere, this is not uh, the opinion that ma ma majority of the true Muslims have today. And uh, there, there are certain things that uh, uh, Shaykh al-Akbar has written that alludes to this. And this is what's been criticized by Imam Nitaimi and other great Muslims. But over here, I also want to mention that Imam Nitaimi also had many opinions that are against the majority. And in fact, one of the opinions, he is in agreement with Shaykh al-Akbar. He said that hell will not be forever because the hadith says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put his foot over the hell fire. And, it, and that's when it will become black. And Imam Nitaimi says that uh, Allah's rahmah precedes his mercy. But the only difference, and that's, and then he quotes the verses of the Quran, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the hellfire, khalidina fiha versus khalidina fiha abada for Jannah. So he had an opinion that was against the majority regarding heaven and hell. And this was the opinion of Imam Shaykh al-Akbar also. 
they disagreed in the in the in the details. Imam Nitaimiyah felt that if you didn't believe, if you were on the batil, if you were in the hellfire, you'll go into non-existence. And if you have and uh, Sheikh Al Akbar believed that everyone will eventually go to he heaven after the punishment is uh, uh, done. Okay, so these are things we that goes against the. So both of them had opinions that were against the ijma of the ummah. And Imam Nitaimiyah has made uh, statements that the is against the ijma of the ummah in many issues, many many issues. But still, he was a Sufi Sheikh. He was okay with uh, doing uh, gatherings of out loud, loud dhikr. He was okay with doing something, uh, sending rewards to the dead. He was okay with the idea of tasawwuf or the idea of zuhud. He was all for the idea of purification. For all, he's written so much on this, uh, on, on the subject of purification of the heart. He's written so much. And he is buried in the Sufi cemetery in Syria. This is all like documented, well known, uh, and can be further researched. Um, so now, uh, I want to end with, if I can find it, with some verses of the Qur'an that Imam Nitaimiyah gathers together that is a very good explanation from the Qur'an of who is a person of Zuhud, who are the only Allah, who are the people of Tasawwuf, even though he didn't like to use the word, uh, of Sufi, for example. But who are these people? Who are these people? And he describes them. And, you know, call a rose by any, any name, right? Uh, call Allah Allah or call him Rahman whatever name he is for him is all the best names so there can be a difference of opinion on istilahat on, on terminologies but the discipline itself the idea itself uh, the idea that you don't have to take something from the nas something can be from tajriba from experimenting you can write down some words of uh, kalimat and give it to a woman that's pregnant or give it to somebody that's sick this is established by Imam Nitaimi and his Fatuhat okay? uh, so now let's uh, look at two last things, uh, the last thing two things, I want to describe how he describes the Awliya Allah and number the last thing I want to share with you is what Bin Baz says about the same question that Imam Nitaimi said yes to and see what Bin Baz says and why he says it. So now, you'll see how things have changed from the time of Ibn Taymiyyah by even the people that profess to be following Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. So describing the Sufi or the person of Zuhud, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah quotes the following verses to, to explain from the Quran itself that this is a valid discipline, a valid subject. He first quotes this verse, إِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ Indeed, the believers, الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرَ اللَّهِ When Allah is remembered or Allah is mentioned, وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts fill up with fear. Okay? Their hearts get stirred. Okay? وَإِذَا تُطْلَ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ And when read to them are His ayat. Okay, when the Quran is read, زادت هم إيمانا their iman increases. Now, I want to ask you, in al mu'minun, the mu'minun here are who? Are the Sahaba? In al mu'minun, الذين إذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم اللهم جعلنا منهم وإذا تطلع عليهم آياتهم إذا تطلع عليهم آياته when the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are read to them, زَادَتْ هُمْ إِيمَانًا اللهم جعلنا منهم Their iman increases by listening to the Qur'an. وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And they trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some people have also said, وَزَادَتْ هُمْ عَلَىٰ تَوَكُّلُ And they also increase in their tawakkul by listening. Just as iman increases, their tawakkul increases. Right? So, this is how Imam Nitaimiyah is describing the people of Zuhud, the people of Tasawwuf. Okay? So it's not a subject he ignored. In al mu'minuna idha dhukkiru Allah wajilat qulubhum. Number one. Wa idha tutla alihim ayatihi zadat hum imanan. Number two. Wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun. Number three. Next verse of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and in the next verse he says, Allahu. أَنزَلَ أَحْسَنَ الْحَدِيثِ 
Allah is the one who sent down the best discourse, the Quran. Kitaba Mutashabiha, a book that has many similar verses repeating. Mathania in pairs. That the uh, sh they, they, these are people that when they're reading the Quran or they're remembering Allah, their skins shiver, okay, or quiver from the fear out of the the awe of Allah subhanahu wa taala. ثُمَّ تَلِينَ جُلُودِهِمْ وَقُلُوبِهِمْ Then their skin and their hearts become soft إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ for the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he quotes Imam Nataymiyyah, إِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُ الرَّحْمَنِ خَرُّ سُجَّدًا وَبَقِيَّةً وَإِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ And when are read to them the ayat of Rahman, the signs of the Rahman, خَرُّ You know خَرُّ مُوسَى سَعِقَ When Musa saw the tajalli, the manifestation of Allah on the mountain, he خَرُّ He fell down. خَرُّ سُجَّدًا They just... Uh, th this is the kayfiyah, this is the hal of the sahaba that is being described. إِذَا تُطْلَعَ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُ الرَّحْمَنِ خَرُّ سُجَّدًا وَبَقِيَةً They fall down in prostration and start crying. Okay, This is the qualities that he, Ibn Taymiyyah, wants to imbue his students with. وَإِذَا سَمِئُ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ and when they hear what has been sent down to the messenger, meaning the Qur'an, تَرَى أَعْيُنُهُمْ تُفِيدُ مِنَ الدَّمْعِ That their eyes become filled, welled up with tears. مِمَّا عَرَفُوا مِنَ الْحَقِّ Of what they know of the truth. That when, and over here is about those that became the Sahaba, that the people of the book, when they would hear, they'd like, oh, we know this from our book. Right? خَرُّوا إِلَىٰ أَزْقَانِ يَبْكُونَ وَيَزِيدَهُمْ خَشُوعًا And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَخَرُّونَ لِأَزْقَانِ They fall on their faces, يَبْكُون crying, وَيَزِيدَهُمْ خَشُوعًا And they increase in their awe and their uh, feeling of awesomeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so this is how Imam Ibn Taymiyyah describes the people that he can this is what he what his understanding of of uh of the of what this discipline of zuhud what it meant to him okay so uh i just wanted to share this with you that these are the four verses he chose and then he continues and then he says what okay and he said uh and he says there there are three uh uh, levels okay and then he's the person who has no softness uh, and he has he has no heart softness in his heart and he gives the example of this verse of the quran allah referring to the certain gr uh, group of people of bani israel and then your hearts became hard okay like stones so allah is is giving the tashbih of the heart to the stone. Aw ashaddu qaswa. Or even something more hard than stone. Wa inna min al hijarati. There are some hearts, they're so blessed that they're like hearts. Wa inna min Because the Sahaba, they were like heart, rocks, right? They were like killing their daughters. So inna min al hijarati lama yatafajaru min al there's some rocks from which rivers flow and these are like people whose hearts they burst and then what happens like a river flows everywhere and reaches everywhere far 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 from one part of the world to the other part there are some hearts their their knowledge their fahm their 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 concern their fikr their phase their their they're everything, they just, they just reached, their, their sincerity reached everything. There were stones, like the, the heart of maybe Malcolm X, and then what it became, right? كَالْحِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَ وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ And then there's some hearts, وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّكُ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءِ And then there's some rocks, they start, they crack 
and a little bit of water starts pouring out, and it forms like a pool of water. A big lake, or a small lake, or a small pool. Whoever comes to it will benefit from it. Whoever comes to this will benefit from it. فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءِ And water comes out. Instead of rivers coming out, water comes out. These are also good people. وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَحْبِتُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ And then there's some rocks, some hearts. They, some rocks, مِنْ لَا They move, they move, they shiver from one place to another. They get moved. And if people meet these people, they will also be moved by how they're moved, how their hearts are moved. Allah is not aware of what you are doing. And then he quotes many other verses, but this is how Imam Ibn Taymiyyah is talking about the heart, its different levels, its training, the, 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 the type of uh, heart that is needed, the khashu of Allah. These these are the things that he was talking about that his teachings and his teachers uh, taught him regarding purification of the soul. So, <clears throat> you know, this kind of like uh, everything has to be uh, the, 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 the modern day pseudo-Salafi takes the name of Ibn Taymiyyah for their own marketplace but is not sincere to him as and is not fair to him. And no one has been more unjust to Imam Netaymiya than the Salafis themselves. They've been the most unjust to him, most unfair to him, uh, using his name uh, to because th this is the person they found in history who was criticizing some of the Sufis uh, more than anyone else. They thought that he would be the their their invisible imam right uh that they would have to justify uh, their own uh version of islam okay so uh let me just end with what i was saying was now let's look at what sheikh bin baz says about uh the sufis and halaqatul dhikr and all that and then i'll let you yourself can then now decide that was he May Allah have mercy on him and forgive him. Was he, was he being just to the legacy of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah? So Sheikh bin Baz is asked about the hadith of the Prophet, Inna lillahi malaikatu yatufuna fi turuk. And there are angels that go about looking for people that are doing dhikr. And, uh, you know, those yaquluna yusabbihunaka, they were doing your tasbih, subhanallah. وَيُكَبِّرُونَكَ And they were doing your takbir. وَيَحْمِدُونَكَ وَيُمَجِّدُونَكَ And they were doing your uh, uh, saying La ilaha illallah and glorifying Allah. And Allah says, did they see Jannah? So he's quoting this, the questioner is quoting these sayings of the Prophet ﷺ. And uh, uh, جَلَسْنَا uh, نَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ وَنَحْمَدُهُ عَلَى مَا هَدَانَا لِلْإِسْلَامِ And he's quoting these traditions of the Prophet ﷺ to ask Shaykh bin Baz his opinion. So he says, فَلَا رَيْبَ إِنَّ الْإِجْتَمَاعَ عَلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَقِرَعَاتُ الْقُرْآنِ وَدَرْسُ الْإِلْمِ شَرْعِي وَنَحْوَ ذَلِكْ مِمَّا يُفِيدُ الْمُجَالِسِينَ إِلْمًا نَافِئًا وَعَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَفِقْهًا في الدين أمر المطلوب شرعا. Okay, so he says there's no doubt that gatherings in which Allah is remembered, the Quran is read, the rules of knowledge happen, and like that, and gatherings in which there's beneficial knowledge and good deeds and understanding of the Deen. This is أمر المطلوب شرعا. This is something that is desired by the Sharia. And then he himself quotes different sayings of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم regarding majalis of zikr. Okay. And then he says, فَالْحَدِيثَ الَّتِي جَاءَتْ فِي هَذَا الْبَابِ مِنْهَا مَا ذَكَرَ لِسْأَلْ And as far as the traditions of the Prophet ﷺ that have come regarding this chapter, مِنْهَا مَا ذَكَرَهُ السَّائِلْ Amongst the questioner has mentioned some narrations, وَمِنْ أَحَدِيثِ كُلِّهَا تَدِلُّ عَلَى فَضْلُ الْإِجْتِمَاعَ عَلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ They all mention the fadl, the superiority or the blessings of gathering together for the dhikr of Allah. Wa talibul ilm and seeking knowledge and fiqh fi deen wa madhakira fi ma yanfa'u abd fi deenihi wa dunyahu. 
and whatever benefits them of this world and the next world. وَكُلُّ هَذَا الْأَمْرُ مَطْلُوبٌ شَرْعًا All of this is desired in Sharia. وَلَكِنْ But, but, now, all that is desired. Now, remember what the Hadith says. Those angels who are looking for people who are saying, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, together, right? This is what the narration clearly, unequivocally, textually, like there's no, there's no need for, you know, I inducing a meaning, right? There's no need for like uh, inducing a meaning. The, the, the Zahir text is saying what it is saying, right? There's no need for Hisharat uh, nas or any of that. This is what the Zahir of the Nas is itself saying. But he says, وَلَكِنْ مَا تَفْعَلُ السُّفِيَّةِ but as for what the Sufis, so if you're doing this, this as a Sufi, right? Min ijtima'at khasa, special gatherings, bis sawtil khasa, in a special voice. I didn't know there, I never knew Sufis have a special voice, but okay. But maybe Bin Baz has actually sat in a few of those majalis. Wa awa'idul khasa, in which there are special returns you can say laysa lahu asal fil shari'a al mutahhira fi shar'a fi al shari'a al mutahhira the purified sharia has no root or basis in this wal ahadith an nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam tafassara bi fi'lihi wa af'alu al sahab wa ardahum may allah be pleased with them allah has mentioned what the sahaba did and now look imam nataymiya mentions the exact opposite of what Sheikh bin Baz is saying. Sheikh ibn Taymiyyah gives the example of the Ashab sunnah reading Qur'an to one another, sitting down to remember the hour, sitting down to do takbir and tahmid and tahleel, the Sahaba doing this. Imam Taymiyyah mentions this. And that all of this is good. And all of the, the people gathering together, reading out loud, this is not bid'ah. He mentions this. right? The people uh, remembering Allah, and reading the Quran in the beginning and the in, in the end, saying salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says none of this is bid'ah. This is not bid'ah. Imam Nitaimiyah says that was the beginning of this lecture. And look at what Bin Baz is saying. He says as for the Sufiya, just throw them in the just as soon as you hear the word. Whereas Imam Nitaimiyah divided them into three groups. Imam Ghazali also divided them into roughly three groups or more for for him. But three three you can say classifications are agreed upon. By Imam Ghazali and Imam Nitaimiyah. So, what is it that I'm trying to say? I'm trying to say that when people say, or when people allude to the fact that we have authenticity because we go back to the Quran and the Sunnah, and then they claim this authenticity in the name of the Sufi Sheikh, Imam Nitaimiyah, who's buried in a Sufi Qadri cemetery, they're making a big mistake and a big blunder and a big slander a big slander against Imam Ibn Taymiyyah because though he was critical of the Sufis and though he was critical of some of the things that they were doing in his time he was not against the whole idea of it itself rather he was for it and he's written many books on the subject including this so he this was his you know this was matloob and maqsood and he himself wore the cloak of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalani Rahmatullah These are like questions of no doubt, the fact where his cemetery is, the fact that what has been documented from more than one source about his khirqa, uh, and so on and so forth. And what he, more than that, and the most obvious of that, is what he himself has written. His own designation of the people of Sufi being the people of Siddiq, his own bringing together ayat of together to justify this system of purification as we uh, went through today. So, <clears throat> those that take the name of Ibn Taymiyyah uh, do not actually represent Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. And so, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this type of deception. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to see the truth. And you know, that we shouldn't... Uh, uh, and, and there is almost... Even though he criticized some aspects, but almost none of the aspects that he criticized are practiced by mainstream Zuhud and Tasawwuf of today. None of that. And maybe partly due to his efforts. But there are some things where he criticized in which he was clearly wrong. A lot of the issues of the grave, he was clearly wrong. But he was against, the, he was clearly wrong. Why I say that? Because he was against the Ijma'ah. 
but he was not against overwhelming 90% of the practices that were happening that were within the Quran and Sunnah. He was not against that. So now, those people that say Imam Nitaimiyah was uh, against the Sufis, they didn't understand him and they didn't read what he wrote correctly. And so this is why I showed you the text so you can yourself see and verify and know, not as a secondary source being myself, but as a primary source for yourself, that this is what Imam Nitaimiyah was actually saying. And then if you read his student, uh, his books, Imam Nitaimiyah, for example, Imam Nitaimiyah mentions uh, in Madaj, uh, Madaj, uh, in his uh, one of his uh, books, he mentions <coughs> that Imam Nitaimiyah had a wird for himself that he did every day. In fact, let me uh, find it and show it to you. So I Imam Nitaimiyah says about one of the awrad of Imam Nitaimiyah that he tried repeatedly and daily, and he gave it as a wird to Ibn Nitaimiyah, for example, amongst the tried awrad. Again, mujarrabat. Who's using this word? Imam Nikayyim. Mujarrabat. Tried. Not from Quran and Sunnah. Something new that was tried. Amongst the tried awrad, which the spiritual travelers have tried and found to work, he who addicts himself to saying, Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, La ilaha illa anta, his heart and mind will become alive. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was very attached to repeating the dhikr and said about it, the divine names al-Hayy al al-Qayyum have a strong spiritual effect on the heart. And he would say that they are from the Asma'ul A'zam. And I heard ibn Taymiyyah also say, who is writing this? Ibn Qayyim. Who is ibn Qayyim? His number one student. Ibn Qayyim is saying, I heard ibn Taymiyyah say, where is he saying this? In Midhajr al-Salikin. Okay. Uh, volume 1, page 448, he says, Recite, Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, I seek aid in your mercy 40 times between Sunnah of Fajr and its Fard. Oh, have you ever heard of a bid'ah? Isn't this a bid'ah of ibadah? No, but Imam Nitaimiyah, again, the most ununderstood scholar of his time, or of this time. I heard Ibn Taymiyyah also say, who recites, Ya Hayu Ya Qayyum, I seek aid in your mercy 40 times between the Sunnah of Fajr and its Fart. His heart will stay alive spiritually and not die. Imam Niqayim recommends this word of Shaykh Ibn Taymiyyah again in Madajj as salikin in volume 3, 464. Uh, uh, Ibn Ali Bazar, one of the murids of Ibn Taymiyyah, says that his sheikh would sit at Fajr and continuously recite Surah Al-Fatiha until sunrise. He would also say that during this time Ibn Taymiyyah would gaze and stare into the sky. Gazing into the sky was something uh, Sidi Ahmad uh, Badawi was well known for. This is mentioned in Bazar's book, uh, Al-A'lam uh, al Uliya. Okay. Ibn Taymiyyah approves of reciting 70, we talked about this, so this is also mentioned here, okay? Uh, reciting 70,000 times La ilaha illallah for the, uh, the reward of that being given to the dead. But again, the point being that Imam Taymiyyah is not the, there, you could say there is the, uh, there is the Ibn Taymiyyah of the Salafis, which is the, the myth of who he is. And then there is the Ibn Taymiyyah of who he really historically was and what he historically actually wrote. That is not the myth he was. He considered some Sufis bad, but he considered others to be Siddiqin. That Ibn Taymiyyah is the true Ibn Taymiyyah. If you want to follow Ibn Taymiyyah, that's fine, but that was the true Ibn Taymiyyah. Just to give you an idea of how much he was into the spiritual world, his student, uh, uh, Imam Hafiz Abu Hafs, Umar bin Ali al-Bazar, he mentions, there was once an argument between some of the noble scholars and myself in some issues that we were debating at length over. So we decided to stop our discussion and go to the Sheikh and give us the decisive word. We found the Sheikh himself had come to us. And when we were going to ask him about what we were discussing, he delved into the issue before we could even speak. He laid out each of our positions regarding what we were discussing, mentioned the opinions of the scholars on them, and then clarified which opinions were most supported by the evidence until he got it got to the final issue we wanted to ask him about and told us that we ourselves were hoping to learn from uh, from asking him 
So my companions and I were speechless and shocked at what we had just learned from him, as well as what Allah had made him privy to regarding to what we had been thinking of and during the days I spent with him. If I wanted to research a particular issue, I would barely have just thought of it, only to find him proceeding to explain it to me and providing me an answer from numerous angles. That is Imam Nathamiyah. That is his spirituality. Another one, the rightest knowledgeable scholar, Shaykh Ahmad, Al-Harami told me that he once traveled to Damascus. He said, so it happened that when I arrived, I had no provision or money with me. I knew nobody in the city. So I began to walk through its streets like a lost person. Suddenly, I saw the sheikh walking swiftly towards me. He greeted me, smiled in my face, put in my hand a small pouch filled with some dirhams and said to me, spend these now and stop worrying about what you are thinking about as Allah will never abandon you. He then walked away as if he had only come to see me. So I supplicated for him, and I was very happy with this. I then asked some people, who is this man? They said, you don't know him? He's Ibn Taymiyyah. It has been a very long time since we have seen him on this road. Now, let me ask my uh, Salafi brothers, why don't they mention these stories of Ibn, Ibn Taymiyyah? Because it goes against his mythical image. It goes against, because this, telling stories like this, would put him in the categories that they don't want to put him into the category of. They don't want to put him in the category of people that are considered like saints. They don't want to put him in the category of somebody that does miracles because that would be just, you know, goofy stuff. Now, let's continue a little bit. One or two more things about Ibn Taymiyyah that I'd like to share. In his book, Aqud al Dururiya, on page 373, one of the students of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Abdul Hadi, says it would be not befitting that there would be a qutub other than Imam ibn Taymiyyah. Who's saying this? His student. Ibn al-Hadi says in a poem about ibn Taymiyyah, he was the qutub scholar and imam. He then says, he became an example for mankind in our times, for he was he is the single qutub. Who would other than him, who other than him is the qutub of the universe? It is he who attained the station of Abdal. He wrote, he is the scholar and qutub whose news have spread. He writes in his poetry, O oh, Taqiyuddin ibn Taymiyyah, the fard of his time. He is the Qutub al-Zaman, the crown of all people. He is the Qutub of realities. The people of Tasawwuf and spiritual training are amazed by him. Okay, so who's saying this? His students are saying this. His students. So, this language of the miracles of Imam Nathamiya, the spirituality of Imam Nathamiya, Imam Nathamiya knowing the unseen and then talking about it, Imam Nathamiya writing about the uns that somebody can see something even in a wakeful state or hear something in a wakeful state and it's actually a miracle. We read that. So that's Ibn, that's the real Ibn Taymiyyah. Yes, he had his had the issues that were that he made big blunders in rather. But he was an amazing scholar, amazing man of tasawwuf. He was a Sufi sheikh. And Allah used him for the deen <clears throat> against the Mongols, against the rationalists, against the philosophers, and against the Christians. And Jawab uh, al he wrote against Christianity, uh, the jihad he did against the Mongols. <clears throat> he really changed the course of history. But the Ibn Taymiyyah of I'll put it another way. The Ibn Taymiyyah of the Salafi scholars and the Ibn Taymiyyah of Shawliullah, these are two different people. Two very different people. They're like two different, they're like two different people, like uh, one's myth, it's like Santa Claus, right? Santa Claus, like the person you made out of nowhere that exists. And then there is uh, the real Jesus. Right, the real Jesus, not the the fake white man Jesus. Right, then the, the, so this is the 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 the, the distinction, like the the tr the myth versus reality here is so profound, so profound, so profound, and so it's almost embarrassing that if you were to get into a dialogue to explain this to me, I mean, I don't, I mean, you're the one who the questions are for you, based upon what he wrote. Uh, and uh, a lot of the things he wrote against Sufis are correct. 
And a lot of things he wrote against Sufis are the same as what other people have written, like Imam Ghazali against the Sufis. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all our great scholars. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive Imam Nitaimiyah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the correct, uh, destroy the myth of who Imam Nitaimiyah was versus the reality of whom Imam Ibn Taymiyyah was. So, أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسال المسلمين والمسلمات. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ramadan is coming. And so, I want to offer uh, all of uh, my subscribers, my listeners, my students, <coughs> a chance to participate in something really amazing. As you know, we have a very amazing community where we are. We are in a place where there's about a three to five mile radius of of dominantly Muslims. And particularly in that, Jami Masjid plays a central role, the masjid that we're part of. And of course, we're getting ready for Akhirul Zaman. Uh, and so that doesn't come for free. Um, so let me share with you uh, some of the activities that we've been doing, some of the da'wah work we've been doing. Hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, you will uh, appreciate what we're doing and then I have something to request from you. So inshallah, this is the opportunity we have. You can turn your $30, $1 a day in Ramadan into $130 because Launch Good is offering us that for anyone who gives us $1 a day, $1 a day in, during the month of Ramadan, they'll make it into $130 for us. So Launch Good is matching $100 for every donor who signs up for their daily Ramadan giving challenge. Just sign up to donate $1 per day to give fun to to our fundraiser and launch good will give us an automatic a hundred dollars there's no uh you know catch so you go to the link that'll be on the comment section or the description which will be launchgood.com slash team jammy buffalo okay and then you press on the white button which i'm going to show you and you sign in uh, the amount it literally takes two minutes to do the whole process and that's it your $30 donation will net us an extra hundred dollars so you're getting a lot more because you're helping uh, us get the re uh, the the finance in this world but you will reap the benefit in this world as well as the next world now let me just show you this is the launch good website uh, when you click on our link it'll take you to this page Okay, and over here, you can kind of see the uh, people that just signed up. Okay, these are some of the people. 
that just signed up, 359 joined today, alhamdulillah. Uh, we're competing against some of the bigger organizations and some of the bigger well-known speakers. But you can schedule your giving by clicking on this white uh, area here. And you can put set your amount for $1 for every $30 it's going to be $130. You can bring this down to $1 a day during the month of Ramadan. Okay. And you click next. And uh, <clears throat> and so please definitely do that. Okay. So please do that. The other thing I want to say is that uh, we're a very active community. If you are someone who's serious, has a family, who's worried about Akhiru Zaman, and wants a, to be in a masjid that's strong in da'wah, strong on helping the youth, as you saw from the video. If you're someone who wants to be a, in a place where you can study the deen on a daily basis, if you want to be in a place that's getting ready for akhir zaman then definitely consider moving to our community in Buffalo. <clears throat> so, with that, I will end. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.